Uh, my name is Artem, and today I'm going to present Alomora. So the problem that Alomora is trying to solve is the problem of privacy bugs. As many of us know, privacy bugs lead to data leaks, and those data leaks can be very damaging and also violate a bunch of privacy laws like GDPR or CCPA and others. For example, in a recent case of Twitter, they collected phone numbers uh, in order to improve their account security, but actually used it for the purpose of marketing, which was the wrong purpose. So this led to a $150 million fine. So let's take a step back and think about how do software developers catch bugs? We have tools that help us catch bugs, be it a debugger, static analyzer, threat sanitizer, and others. But there is nothing quite like that to help us catch privacy bugs. So what should we do? There are two main observations that underpin our work. First one is that developers are people. And people make mistakes, especially when reasoning about complex and convoluted systems. So it's hard for developers to remember which policy applies to which data and to actually perform the checks where those checks are needed. The second observation is that the core business logic of web application is actually just moving data around. So the regions that are critical to data privacy and privacy policy enforcement, they're small and well-contained. So the main insight of this work is that developers need small and clear regions of privacy-critical code on which they could focus their attention and then get automatic guarantees for the rest of the code base. The threat model that we are employing are honest developers, honest developers who try their best, so the malicious actions are out of scope of this work. So let's actually see how Alomora works. For example, let's say you have an application in, into which the students submit their answers after a lecture, let's say like post-lecture quiz application. So in order to enforce privacy policies in these applications using Alomora, uh, the developer would first add the policy to the policy storage. Let's come up with an example policy, for example, the access control policy. What is important for access control policy? This policy needs to keep track of the owner of the data in order to actually enforce access control. So the developer would add the owner field to the policy. Also, we would need the function that actually checks whether the currently authenticated user is the owner of the data. So the developer would add this to the policy too. And finally, the developer would need to write an annotation to specify which data this policy applies to. When data comes into Alomora from a different data sources, Alomora developers annotate some of the sources with Alomora-related data. So when the data comes into application from those data sources, Alomora would automatically associate the policy with the data and put it into the policy container. Alomora will also prevent the developers from accessing the data inside the container directly. In our prototype, we use Rust, so Rust encapsulation and memory safety provide those guarantees. So now the data is inside the policy containers and developers cannot interact with the data. So what do we do? We, Alamora developers, provide multiple ways to safely interact with the data inside a policy container. Let's take an example of an endpoint where the students actually submit their answers in our web application. Let's say that when the answers are submitted, you would want to auto-grade those answers. This is a relatively simple operation. So Alomora can statically verify that the data is not leaked during this operation. Then this would run as is, which does not incur any runtime overhead. Let's say you want to do something more complex, like train a linear regression model on the data. Uh, this is more complex, and its safety cannot be, most probably cannot be verified by static analysis. Alomora can run it in a sandbox which also prevents the operation from leaking the data, but it has some runtime cost. But what if, you, what if the operation actually sends the data to some outside sync that is not annotated with Alomora-related data? For those cases, Alomora provides developers with privacy-critical regions. So another developer or reviewer could review this operation manually and attach their GitHub signature to the code. And then this is verified at compile time. However, since we do not know which data would get into the, that region, 
policy check is also called at runtime to check that releasing data is actually permitted by the policy. And finally, if the data flows into one of the sinks annotated by Alomora, we treat it as safe and reviewed. However, we would still need to call a policy check since we don't know which data exactly could flow into the sink. In total, we leverage existing code review processes in order to provide practical guarantees for developers. Finally, let's talk about the prototype and evaluation. We applied Alomora to a lecture question submission system of 1.5K lines of code in Rust, and we were able to use Alomora in order to enforce those policies. We've identified 17 calls to Alomora API, while everything else gets automatic, static, automatic guarantees due to Rust memory safety. We've also noticed that most of those regions could be enforced automatically, and only three actually require human review. This human review would result only in approximately 100 lines of code that the developer needs to check, which we consider acceptable developer effort. In conclusion, the problem that Alomora is trying to solve is the lack of practical tools to check whether the code actually abides by privacy policies. Our solution is a system that employs privacy critical regions for developers to let them focus their attention on something that matters and getting the automatic guarantees for the rest. In our preliminary results, we have evaluated Alomora on a, a web, a web submission system, which incurred acceptable developer effort and was able to enforce a range of policies in a Rust web application. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions for the presenter. Hi, uh, Max Demoulin from uh, DBOS. I do have a question with respect to how portable um, the system will be across regions. Let's say that I want to write some privacy container that is going to be you know, maybe tailored for GDPR and some another one from HIPAA. Can I reuse the same code? Can I parameterize the, 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 the privacy policy? That's a good question. Uh, since Al in Alomora, privacy policies are code, they, all, the, all the software principles for parameterization could be also applied to the policies. So you could, you could I would expect, uh, add different policies to different data depending on the scope of the privacy laws that you are concerned with. Thank you. Okay, Ming Yuli from SJTU. Uh, as developers, um, how can I frame these privacy critical regions in the first place? That's a very good question. So since Alomora already wraps the data into the privacy containers, developers wouldn't be able to access the data inside the privacy containers unless they use one of the Alomora annotated sinks or mm -hmm. privacy critical regions. So by the virtue of Alomora, you wouldn't be able to get the data outside to the user unless you use one of the things annotated by Alomora or privacy critical. Okay, thank you. I have one quick question. So could you say a little bit about the nature of the sandbox that you are trying to implement for the runtime enforcement? Mm -hmm. So in our current prototype, we uh, use approach that uh, was mentioned in the paper called Erlbox. So we uh, compile the code from Rust into WebAssembly that gives guarantees that outside memory is not accessed by that code. And then we bind it together to the application. Okay. Let's thank the speaker.